Junie B. Jones and some sneaky peeky spying. Chapter six, squeezy lips. I didn't tattle tell on Mrs. That's because if I told mother, I would get in trouble for spying. And if I told store guy, Mrs. might go to jail. So I just keeped it in a secret inside my head. Because nobody can see secrets inside your head. And not even if they look in your ears. On Sunday, Grandma and Grandpa Miller came to our house for dinner. Only I couldn't talk to them that much. That's because secrets were very slippery and I didn't want it to slip out of my mouth by accident. So, why so quiet tonight, Junie B? said Grandma Miller at the table. Cat got your tongue? My mouth went wide open. What cat, Grandma? Is it the same cat that got killed by the ice cream truck? How come he wants to get my tongue? Did his tongue get squished in the accident? Grandma Miller made a face. Then she didn't eat her roast beef anymore. Mother looked surprised at me. You sure did get chatty all of a sudden. Does this mean you're not mad about cookies anymore? And so then I remembered to stop talking again or else my secret might slip out. I squeezed my lips together very tight. And guess what else? Even the next day when I was on the bus to school, my lips stayed squeezed. Hi, Junie B, said my bestest friend, Grace. I did a wave at her. That Grace frowned at me. How come you're not saying hi? You have to say hi. It's the rules. Except for I still didn't say hi, and so then she called me the name of Big Stinky. And when we got to school, that Grace told Lucille that I was being a meanie, and so those two played horses all by themselves, and not me. And how come I finally had to sing something very loud at them? I've got a secret, ha, 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 I sang. That Grace put her hand on her, on her hips. So, she said, we don't care, do we, Lucille? Except for just then Lucille ran over to me speedy quick, because she cared, that's why. If you tell me your secret, I'll be your best friend, she said. Yeah, only I can't, Lucille, I explained, because if I tell you my secret, Mrs. might get in big trouble, and so I have to keep it inside my head. Lucille did a frown at me. It's not good to keep secrets inside your head, Junie B, she said. My brother says keeping secrets inside your head makes pressure in there, and pretty soon your head blows up. My eyes got very big at her. Oh, no, I hollered real upset. Then I holded my head real tight with my hands, and I ran to my very fast to the nurse's office, because she has band-aids to hold your head together, I think. My head's going to blow! My head's going to blow! I yelled at the nurse. She jumped up from the desk and hurried over to me. What's wrong, Junie B? Do you have a bad headache? she asked. No, I have a bad secret. It's about Mrs. Only I can't tell anybody and now there's a pressure in my head and I need a band-aid or else it's going to explode. The nurse said, calm down to me. Then she put a band-aid on my head and me and her went to principal's office. Principal is the boss of the school. Me and him know each other very good. That's because I keep getting sent down there and so now I'm not even afraid of that guy. Principal sat me in a big wood chair. Good afternoon, Judy B., he said. What's the trouble today? Good afternoon, I said back. My head's going to blow. Principal frowned his eyes at me. Why do you think that, he asked. I did a little bit of squirming, because they got a secret in there. That's why, I said. Principal sat down at his big desk, and he folded his hands. Maybe if you tell me your secret, I can help you, he said. Yeah, only I can't talk, I told him. The principal looked disappointed at me. But I thought you and I were pals, he said. We are, I said. I'm not even afraid of you. The principal did a chuckle. Good. That's good, he said. Then why don't you tell me what's bothering you? That's when I did a huffy breath at him. Because the guy that wasn't listening to me, of course. Yeah, only I already said I can't talk. Remember that? Because if I talk, then I might accidentally tell you that my teacher stole grapes at the grocery store. And then she might have to go to jail. And so that's how come I just have to keep it a secret inside my head. And that's all. I smoothed my skirt. The end, I said. Then I squeezed my lips together very tight or else my secret might slip out. Only guess what? I think it already did. Chapter 7. Sour Grapes Principal called Mrs. to come to the office, only I didn't even know he was going to do that sneaky thing. That's how come I had to pull my skirt way over my head, or else Mrs. would see me there and she would know I tattletailed on her. Don't do that, said Principal. Yeah, only I'm allowed, I said from underneath my skirt, because I have my new red tights and also boxer shorts. 
After that, Principal went out of his office, and I heard my teacher's voice outside the door. Then I quick got down from my big wood chair, and I hid it under Principal's giant desk because I was scared of what was going to happen. That's why. I stayed quiet for lots of minutes, and I heard feet come back in the office, so I made my breath very quiet. Junie B? Junie B. Jones? said Principal. She might be hiding, said Mrs. She's good at that, you know. And so just then, I had to think of something very quick, or else that might they might come looking for me, I think. Yeah, only Judy B. Jones isn't hiding, I said in a scary voice. Judy B. Jones had to go home. Only don't call her mother or else she will get mad at you and crack your head open. After that, feet walked real fast around the desk. It was principal. Come out of there right now, young lady, he said. I peeked my eyes at him. Shoot. I said, very quiet. Then I had to sit in the big wood chair again, and Mrs. sat down next to me, except for she didn't. I didn't look at her, or else she might be making a fist at me. Good afternoon, Judy B., she said in a nice voice. I did a gulp. I think you and I need to have a little talk, she said. Then my eyes got a teeny bit of wet in them, because a little talk means I'm going to get yelled at. Yeah, only I tried not to tattletale on you, I said very quick, because I didn't want you to go to jail for stealing grapes. And so I kept it a secret inside my head, and I didn't talk, and Grandma Miller thought a dead cat had got my tongue. Only today, Lucille said my head was going to blow, and so that's how I came. I run to the nurse for a band-aid, and she took me to principal, and then my secret accidentally slipped out of my lips. Mrs. dried my eyes with a tissue. It's okay, Junie B., she said. I'm not angry at you. I just need to know what you saw me do at the grocery store. Can you tell me what you saw? Then she said the word exactly. I made my voice very whispering. I exactly saw you eat grapes, I told her, except for you didn't pay the store man for them. You just put them in your mouth and you ate them. And that's called the world word of stealing, I think. After that, I hid my hand under my skirt again. You don't have to hide, Junie B., said Mrs., I'm the one who should buy hiding. I'm the one who took the grapes. I peeked my eyes over her, my eyes over my skirt at her. Then Mrs. did a little smile, and she explained all about what happened. Two weeks ago, I bought some grapes at the grocery store, she said, but when I got them home, I discovered they were so sour, no one in my family would eat them. So this week, when my husband and I went back to the store, I thought I'd be smart and taste a couple of grapes before I bought them. I raised my eyebrows. Is that the rules? I asked very quiet. Mrs. shook her head. No, she said, that's not the rules. I should have told the grocery man about my sour grapes, and I should have asked him if I could sample one or two. But I didn't do that, and it was right of you to worry when you saw me eating them without paying for them. It was, I asked. Mrs. smiled again. Of course it was, she said. It shows you no right from wrong, and it also shows that teachers make mistakes just like everybody else. Teachers aren't perfect, Junie B. No one is perfect. After that, I felt relief in me because if no more sec because of no more secrets, that's why. Yeah, and guess what else I saw, I said, very happy. I saw you, saw you and your strange man do a big smoochy kiss, and it was right in front of the whole entire everybody, only you didn't even know I was spying on you. Because I'm not actually allowed to do that sneaky thing, only my mother never even find it out. I smiled very proud of myself, except for Mrs. didn't smile back. And Princess Bull didn't smile back, too. And guess why? Another secret just slipped out of my mouth. That's why. Mrs. went back to room 9. That's because the bell rang to start garden, kindergarten, of course. Only Principal didn't let me go, too. He said to stay in my wood chair. Then he called Mother on the telephone and told her all about the grocery store and also about my sneaky peeking spying. Oh, this is Chapter 8, Grandparents' Day. Principal is a squealer. After that, Mother said she wanted to talk to me, only when I said hi, she didn't even say hi back. She said she wasn't very happy with me, Missy, and no more spying means no more spying, and we would talk about that this after her work. And when Mother said she never wants to get any more phone calls from the principal, did I understand? Did I? Did I? I looked at Principal. Mother says not to call her anymore, I told him. Then Mother did a loud groan in the phone, except I don't know why. After that, me and her hanged up, and Principal said I could go to room 9, and so I run there speedy quick. 
Only too bad for me, because I got there too late to sing my country tizzy thee, sweet land of liver free, which is my favorite flag song. And so I just had to sit down in my table and that's all. I showed Lucille my band-aid. See, my head's not blowed up, I said, very happy. Too good. Too bad, said the mean boy named Jim. I made a fist at him. Then me and him got into a scuffle. Scuffle is a school word for it. I accidentally tore his shirt. Only guess what? I didn't even get in trouble. Because just then, grandparents came to room nine for grandparents day. Hey, there's mine. There's mine, I hollered. Very excited. Mine is the grandpa with the baldy head. Mine too, said a girl named Charlotte. Mine too, said the, my boyfriend named Ricardo. Then a grandpa, grandma with blonde hair came in, and she had a long red fingernails and dangly earrings with jewels on them. That's my Nana, said Lucille. I smiled at her. Your Nana looks like a money bags, Lucille, I said. After that, another grandma came in, and she ran over to that Jim I hate, and she tried to hug him very tight. Only that mean Jim kept on standing there, and he didn't even hug her back. I tapped on her. I will hug you, I said. And so then me and her hugged very tight. I hate your grandboy, I said very sweet. Just then, Mrs. clapped her loud hands together, and she made the grandparents sit down at the back of the room. And then the children talked all about what they do in room nine. It's fun here, said my bestest friend, Matt Grace. We learn to count and to read and to wash our hands after we go to the bathroom. And we learn recess and snacks and art, said Ricardo. Art is my favorite, I called out. Only my art didn't get hanged up because I painted a whole horse and his head turned out like a fat wiener sausage and so I had to tear it up and stomp on it with my shoes. Then that mean Jim did a cuckoo sign at me. And it was right in front of the whole entire grandparents. Yeah, only everybody makes mistakes, I said. Right, missus? Right, because on Saturday, you kissed a strange man at the grocery store, and you stole a bunch of grapes, and eat. so even teachers make mistakes, right? Mrs. Face went funny, and her skin turned a color of reddish, and her voice couldn't say any words. How come you're not talking, missus? I hollered out. Does the dead cat got your tongue? Just then, Grandma Miller made a loud laugh in the back of the room. Then I heard my grandpa laugh, too, and pretty soon lots of other grandparents were laughing and laughing. Hey, it sounds happy in this place, I hollered. After that, Mrs. didn't look so reddish anymore. Then we got out the freshments, and Grandma Miller helped me put my cookies on a plate. Mrs. made an announcement to room nine, and she said only two cookies apiece for the children, except for I ate four delicious chocolate ones, and nobody ever saw me, even saw me. Only that's not called stealing, because that's called extras. And after the refreshment, the freshmen's, the grandparents had to go home to their houses. So I hugged my grandma and my grandpa very much. And then I hugged that mean Jim's grandma too. And also Lucille's money bag's Nana. Love your earrings, I said. Then Mrs. saw me being polite and she smiled very nice at me. Mrs. has white teeth. They're just like grandma, Mil grandpa Miller's teeth, only hers don't come out, I think. Except I'm not for sure positive. And guess some go and so guess what? I still wish I could hide in her hamper. That's what.